Thank you. Yeah, so the stuff that you're doing this week, I hopefully have it laid out fairly well for you. Um, I was speaking with Tammy earlier today about a question and the PDFs don't have numbers on the pages for the most part that I've given you so you didn't have to buy more books. Um, and so whenever I give you page numbers, I am going by the PDF number um, for the pages. Uh, if there's anything different, I will try and um, get that to you. And I have another file to get to you as well. I'll be dropping it in the Google file um, and I'll add a note on to the uh, wiki page that talks about it. It has a really nice kind of set of charts about the different positions that people take and the perspectives and then the um, interpretive lenses that you can use and a kind of a chart that helps you maybe sort it out a little bit better if you're having some questions about that. Um, so I'll be throwing that in there. I'll be throwing that in there for you. Hang on. Okay. If that's what you sent me earlier today, that was very helpful, Julie, or Jen. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'd sent you earlier today. Yeah, it's very helpful. It's a Cresswell book. Um, I wanted to, well, I wanted you to have a different Cresswell book, but the different Cresswell book is brand new, and therefore it would have been, you know, a pricey book and another kind of expensive book, and I wanted to cut down on that. So the other one I could find um, as a PDF and um, allow you to do that. You can buy it if you want. It's available. You can Amazon it or whatever, and you can get it probably for about 35 bucks, I think, as an ebook as well. But um, yeah, class, classes are expensive enough without having to buy multiple books that you don't use, although I will say I draw pretty heavily from those ones for the class. The Emerson book is pretty cheap, um, and we will be using it in the middle section for quite a bit. Um, my first qualitative, just to give you history, my first qualitative research book or class, I had to buy 13 books. And we used about two chapters out of each one. And um, I have them on my shelf. I do utilize them. But, you know, you can check them out of the library or buy them as you need them whenever you figure out what kind of perspective you want to be using. And that'll be something that professor, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being just, my brain is fried right now, so I had finals last night for my on-campus class, and I'm wrapping up that first semester, and um, then starting three new classes right now, and um, yeah, I'm having trouble reading and, <laughs> and talking. Um, so he's not in the hospital, no, you can keep talking, Jeremy, I just won't, <laughs> I just won't look, everybody else can be amused. Um, the, uh, the next one that I had, we had to buy like six different books and they were all different books than what we'd used before. And I didn't know that really they were that beneficial either. Um, reading about it is all well and fine and dandy, but I think you aren't going to really understand how it works until you see how it works. Um, which is the reason why I have you doing your own research project. Um, so to kind of zoom through a couple things, oh, I've got windows popping up everywhere trying to get to it. Um, to zoom through a couple things with you, I'm going to go to the website and share my screen with you real quick and just walk you down through what I think is clear as anything, but if you find anything that needs clarification, um, please ask. I will email, I'm really good at getting back to emails really quickly. If you don't hear from me in, if you don't hear from me in like 24 hours, then something's wrong, email me again or text me or call me, I think I gave you my number on there. Um, because I usually have it come right to my phone and I pull it right up and then I'm right back at you with it. Okay, so, you share the screen and then go to that. Call methods. Okay, so, you see the whole screen or is it all scrunched over there? There we go. Hold on, I've gotta move it so I can see it like you can see it. There we go. Can you see the whole screen now? Is it good? Okay. Um, the introduction gives you the couple classes. Here's your Dropbox folder. That's where I'm gonna add any other um, items that I think are necessary for you, either to clarify things. That's where I'll put the 
um, document that I found for Tammy today to, to kind of to uh, kind of clarify a few points on the um, interpret in the the frameworks and and that kind of thing. Um, or else I'll give you a link to the library system if it's possible to just go into the library and download it. Then I'll give you that so that they can get the clicks there. Um, some of these things like um, cognitive apprenticeship with Collins. I have a link there. You are welcome to read it. I am not making you read it, um, but there are just extra kind of references there that sometime in the future you may be interested in taking a look at and they'll be there for you. Um, so we are going to be reading, talking, doing a lot of stuff together. Um, you are going to write a research proposal, send it through IRB, um, get feedback on your stuff, collect some data, kind of along the same model that Ming had you working with but I am making you do the IRB because I think from what I've seen of you guys, you're pretty fantastic. And I really would like for you to be able to present your work at a conference, even if it's like the Hawaii virtual conference next year. Um, I would love to be able to see you doing that and getting some publications on your credentials. Um, so you have that when you start hitting the job market and looking for things like that. And if you're gonna do the work, you might as well make it worthwhile. Um, the only problem is, you have to be able to do it in the summer. So some of you, I know Matt, you're in K-12. Um, I see your face right here, so that's, um, being in K-12 in the summer project kind of thing is a little difficult because you'll lose all your students if you're gonna research with them. Uh, so you have to be able to do it in the summer semester in the, that short time frame that I have blocked off for you. So I will be talking to you over and over and over again about paring things down and making it narrower and narrower so that you can do a really nice qualitative research project on a little tiny question that will give you some really good data to move you either towards your IIP or your dissertation or just something you want to explore if you can't think of something that would fit in that time frame and work for you in this setting. Um, you also have to be able to answer it with qualitative data. That means you are not going to do a survey unless it is all open responses, free choice. You know, write me, write me a reflection paper on this prompt. Or, you know, here are the questions, answer them, and you're expecting them to write several sentences. Um, you'll be doing interviewing, you'll be doing some observation, um, looking at different artifacts that people write you're not gonna be doing a survey. You're not gonna be looking at an experimental design where you have a control and you have something that you measure it against. Um, you're gonna be delving deeply into it and hopefully creating this nice, rich, thick description of stuff that is going to tell everybody you know, where you're at, what situation you have, the context that it's in, and then explain how you think that this ties into your framework and the research that's been done in the field and where you can go from that, okay? Um, so to just give you a little idea what I mean by this, right now, um, I just submitted IRB. They're fantastically fast, so that'll be great for you guys. Um, and my research project is looking, with the, looking at the kids that helped me out with the Mary McGuire School District here in Mount Pleasant this year. Um, I took a group of students that are STEM scholars on campus and then a group of my um, Ed 290 class, which is the um, educational technology class, and we went to Mary McGuire four times in over four months, and they did these little activities with the kids so we could do some looking at that. Now, the kids know we're having STEM night, and they went and they had fun with the kids, and they taught them a little bit of science and all of that. But what I was actually looking at was if I model this playful learning pedagogy with them to help them look at learning not as a structured thing, but from how you can play, then how did they actually pick up the science? What kind of teacher practices did they pick up? That's the kind of stuff I'm looking at, even though they think it was this one thing. So this is a qualitative research project. I'm gonna be doing interviewing. You guys are gonna to get to see some of that data um, as we go along, and I can show you how I'm building codes, how I'm gonna use that to build themes, and then how I'm hopefully gonna generalize that to larger audience. And that's why I'm giving you the framework now, because you're gonna to get to play with some of this as we go through and learn how to use the software to um, identify video moments and to do the coding and things like that. I'll have you working with this so you can kind of see how real data works in a real setting before you try to handle it on your own. So as we go through the semester, all these pieces that we have will build together into your big project. So don't look at the big project and go, holy poop, I have to do this huge project and all these other things. All of them build little bits as we go along that fit together into this big project. Um, I'm going to put some constraints on it that some of you are not going to like, and um, I'll tell you right now, I'm a long writer. <laughs> I write big papers a lot of the time, and um, 
you're not going to write a big paper. I want your pater, paper to be, by the end of it, to have seven to ten references maximum. So you will have to be kind of choosy with that. Um, I want it to be seven to ten pages done. I'm not reading anything past ten pages. How's that? Okay. Um, you can use appendices at the end, references at the end, all you want. You only have seven to ten, so it should only be one page. But you can appendice anything you want to put in there, transcripts or data charts or anything like that, if you're having trouble fitting it into the seven to ten pages. But that's the constraint. Ten pages and done. Um, the couple reasons for this. Number one, quick turnaround time on getting the grades done. And if I have to read 11 25-page papers and try and wrap my head around all these different areas, I'm going to be crazy. So there's my selfish piece of this. More so even is that I want you guys to be able to submit your stuff. And if you want to submit to AERA, you have a 2,000 word limit. If you want to submit it to a journal in Tech Trends, you have a 4,000 to 5,000 word limit. Um, so being able to write very clearly and succinctly is a skill that I am definitely learning. Um, I'm on, for one journal, I have a publication coming out this summer. I'm on my third rewrite to trim another 300 words off of it so that it fits the constraints of the journal. Um, and that's mind racking for me. I have a really tough time doing that. And so giving you guys some practice at being kind of focused as well as not letting it spin out of control under this overwhelming project is a really good thing for you to get your feet wet with this because it's not even the writing up of it that I find is the hard part with qualitative data. It is wrapping your head around all these pieces and how they fit together. And so I want you to use your brain power on coming up with the greatest findings and the, and the way that it ties to the literature and the way you can tie it to practice instead of trying to you know, write me 15 pages and spinning it out or whatever. So that's, those are the reasons behind that. APA double spaced? It'll be APA double spaced. Um, Inch margins, 12 font, the normal kind of stuff. Um, I have all of that. I'll, sp I'll spin you through this real quick now. So over here, syllabus, stuff about me, which I know you're not really thrilled about. Um, Zoom schedule, conferencing signups. Conferencing signups, you can wait till the end to sign up for those if you want. While you are working on your independent research stuff, we are going to be doing independent conferencing half an hour to an hour to an hour and a half as you're going along as needed. You're required to sign up for the first week to tell me kind of where you're heading with things. You're required to pick one week out of the next three to do this. Um, you do not have to sign up for all four weeks, but you are welcome to if that would help you out. If you need more time than's on there, we will figure out how to make that work. If there's people that are having um, similar skill set issues, you know, I don't know how to take these codes, that, this data that I have and pick codes for it. I don't know how to make those into themes. I don't understand this whole process. Then I'll get a couple of you together and we'll do like a little workshoppy thing um, that of course we'll videotape and put it up there for other people if you want. But um, that's the way I have it built for you because number one, this is summer. I'm sure some of you are going to try and take a small break away from your regular work life and um, go somewhere for at least a day with maybe family or friends or whatever. And I would like to have you have the opportunity to be flexible with your time and manage it well on your own space um, and be able to have maybe a small window of relaxation before you have your week off and do your IIP, you know, and start into your IIP in the fall. So that's also the, one of the considerations for that. And then Catherine and I were talking together when we built the class. And I think that we have it structured so your big projects don't overlap too awful much. Um, am I wrong? Did she move things around? No, I think that like weeks 12, I think week 12 is where her big like podcast and your other thing are put together. And then you have to do a, a presentation then later on. She morphed that last night to, to um, the mod seven, but whatever. I mean, as long as we know we have, we'll figure it out. I, <laughs> I worked really hard to make these work so that you only had to meet with me every other week. Um, okay, well, so let's go we'll go through this really quickly. Um, with the syllabus, I tried to block it out so you can see kind of what's due every week. 
the things that are um, asterisked are the ones that are going to kind of build into your final paper. So, you know, for example, this position statement, you're not going to use the whole two to three pages of it. You're going to pick one or two pieces of it, write a small paragraph about how you are as a researcher and how that relates to what you're working with, and that'll be a small chunk of your paper, kind of pared down. Your research questions obviously will be in there. You'll have your lit review. That'll be a couple pages of it. Um, your data collection table, what your research questions are, how they map out to what you're collecting and how you're analyzing it, that'll be in there. There's a nice little table that you can append to see if you're a long writer. Um, your protocols in that, I missed a star in there. That will be in there somewhere. Um, your code book, what you're using to analyze your data, and your procedures that you use for collecting your data and analyzing will be in there as well. Your preliminary findings, you'll have a little bit of that in there, and then you'll have um, kind of your wrap up on how you see it tying into the, the theoretical literature that exists as of now. Um, think of this as like a draft for a major conference proposal. Um, you're gonna do all this work, it's gonna be done, It'll be like your revision one because we don't have time really to do um, a draft paper and then revise and make it really, really focused and really fantastic like the work I know you can do. Um, so we're going to concentrate on getting you to a point where I feel very comfortable at having you keep writing and then we can work on it as you like over the year if you would like to, to get it submitted for something. You're missing all the major deadlines. Um, AERA is in July, NARS, which is science ed, which I do, is in August. Um, if you're doing something with computer support or collaborative learning, shoot, <laughs> um, all of that kind of thing, then it, it works um, it kind of into giving you six months or so to work around your other stuff that's going on if you would like to submit then next summer for the next year. And that should give you a nice presentation while you're writing on your dissertation that if you're actually looking at changing jobs or upgrading your job, you would have something to put on your CV from that. Okay, so that's basically the, the whole scheme of things as it goes. Week 16, ignore. We don't have a 16 week, but I had to put it in there for building the class purposes. Every week, what I tried to give you is a little kind of overview here. Um, this is what you're reading. This is what I think you'll be doing. These are the things you need to turn into me. I would like you to share your things as a Google Doc that I can edit. That way I can ask you questions, provide you feedback, that kind of thing. So when you actually wrap it up into your final project, you will have this really great um, set of um, annotations in that you're not gonna be doing each assignment over and turning it back into me unless we need to. If we really need to, we can. Okay, so that's gonna kick me off in eight minutes, which will make it like, I'm redoing another Zoom now here because if you just give us your main number, we can just all log directly right into that, whatever your... My main number on here? Yeah, the one that's your ID. That's the easiest that everybody's been using. You can always just double back right to that one again. Alrighty, well, I'm going to find yeah. it then. I think it's at the top of the screen. Is it 238-329-775? It might be for you guys, but for me, it says Zoom free account Jen Weibel. Wow. Do uh, other people see that at the top of the screen? It's the meeting um, ID? Yeah, I can see it at the top. Yeah, 238-329-775. That may be the one that you used to schedule. It may not be your actual ID number. Uh, right. Yeah. That's what I'm no. That may be the room. But, yeah. So... But when you go back and you have an ID number that is, we could actually all just log directly into it and that would go into your personal room. Mm, I don't have a paid account yet, so that's probably why I'm not. Yeah, you, you don't have to have a paid account. It, it would be a nine digit number as opposed to a 10, which would be the paid accounts. Thank you, Preston. Yeah, yeah. As you can see, I did not research my tool use very well. That was very bad of me. Um, um, Maybe it's in here. Uh, let me see if I can tell you. Uh, There's my meeting ID number, the three, the two, three, eight. That's not my number. That's the meeting that's number. That, that may be the current room number. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know if you. If you if, uh, let's see. If you click maybe schedule. 
Yeah, if you click schedule. Yeah, yeah here we go. Schedule button, you'll see personal I meeting ID that you can use that, and that will be there your. There you go. That's actually a ten-digit number, I think. And yeah, can, it is. You can actually use that, and we can all just log into that. You guys can all see it, right? <laughs> um, no. Okay. Oh, no, we can't can see you it. put it in the chat, maybe? Yeah, Copy it. Yeah, I, I can put it into chat, but I have yeah. to um, close the window to do it. Hold on. Well, it is. Can, it's making, because I'm sharing the screen, it's making me close the window right. to get to there. So hold right. on. You'd have to close. See, I didn't schedule this to start until 8 o'clock, I think, but because I was logged in and talking, that's when it actually, like, Kind of ran me through. Okay, so I'm going to put it into chat for you guys. No, it won't let me. Hold on. All right, I'll be right back on the share. All right. Oh, and now I can see what everybody's uh, saying. Before I couldn't get to that. <laughs> uh, like this is like catching notes whenever you're um, teaching. Perfect. All right, so there you have it. And whenever it kicks us off, then you'll go to the Zoom thing and you'll click on join, right? Is Correct. what you said? Okay. Yep. Thank you, Preston, for saving the day tonight. Glad um, to help. Okay, so back to sharing the screen here with you. Get you out of my email. Okay, so. The conferencing signups, I used um, a little web link. You can go in there, pick a time that works for you. I tried to give you daytime, evening. There's a couple days that I'm really constrained because of other projects I'm involved with, but I wanted to make sure that I had times to meet with you each week during your, your working alone kind of thing. So week one is just the foundations. This week you're going to come up with a two to three page paper on your position statement. That talks about where you see yourself how you see yourself aligning with the research, if you feel like you're a participant with it, if you feel that you're an outside ob observer, how you kind of fill with that. Page 237 in the Crestwell is on the PDF page. Um, the philosoph philosophical assumption that you associate with, and that's in the reading, and I'm going to drop you the other Crestwell chapter into the Google Docs as soon as we're done here, and that has a really nice table in there, and I'll make a note on that on here. And then the interpretive framework. Do you feel like you're social justice? Do you, are you a constructionist? Which I'm a constructivist um, by nature. So anything I'm looking at with doing, I'm looking at how the knowledge is being building and how people are working with things, um, either socioculturally or within the, the content knowledge. And then you need to share it to me as an editor so that I can leave you some feedback and comments. I need you to email me at some point a topic sentence one sentence, that does not mean 57 words with three conjunctions and 17 different colons and commas and everything else. One sentence, it's your topic. It can be pretty broad, we'll be narrowing it down. And you need to pick five articles. Three of them need to be pretty new because all of you are in kind of a technology-based field. You need to look at the new stuff that's coming out. They should be ranked. I listed you a couple things there knowing some of your um, areas that you're interested in looking in. Um, I can help you find those if you're struggling. Um, and they're going to tell me those five with APA by sharing me in the Google Doc. Okay. If you want to make a folder for this class and share the folder to me, that's fine. You can dump everything in there and that'll work to share it to me as well. Okay. You have till Sunday night to do that. If you have questions, email me. I'll get back with you. We can Zoom. We can talk on the phone, whatever we need to do. Week two, um, I'm already changing this because Google Docs updated by the, from the time I wrote the class, this page of the class. Um, until now, and viewing a Word document or a PDF in Google Docs is not as easy as it used to be. And Hypothesis is an online collaborative annotation platform. I think Troy used one as well. I'm talking to him tomorrow to get that. If you guys know it, you can just tell me um, if that worked pretty well for you. But I wanted you to be able to look through these and be able to pick up the elements. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Tell me what it is. I know you were going to say. Uh, I, I think it was framework is, is what he used. Uh, frame, frame bench. Um, frame bench, thank you. Frame bench is no longer in use. Right, right. They, so, yeah, we, I, heard I that. thought Troy went to something else, though. We also yeah, we. To use hypothesis. Hypothesis last time. Yeah. 
Uh, it was a disaster personally for me. Thank you, Julie. Really? For trying to help me. It, it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. Seriously, I've used I've used hypothesis. We've had um, some Twitter things where we did a um, mob annotation, like a flash mob annotation style on a on a web page. We went down through, and I kind of liked it, but you you hate it. I okay. Mean, I could never get one, first of all, but beyond that. All right, so here's another. We're going to get booted off of here. If everybody wants to stop here and jump into my other room, like Preston says, will work, hopefully. And um, we can talk about this because I have another workaround, but I was hoping that that one was going to work. But we can, we can do that. So everybody go, and I'll see you back in a second.